Cross River threatens to sack 7,000 appointees without APC membership cards. And fear mounts over job losses as business closures and federal government plans increase taxes and tariffs. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The All Progressive Congress in Cross River State has threatened to relieve 7,000 of the Governor Ben Ayade appointees of their appointments for failing to register with the party. The chairman-elect of the party, Alfonso Eba, said the appointees had not registered as members of the APC and gave them up till December 30, uh, 31, 2021 to register or be relieved of their appointment on January the 1st of 2022. Now joining us to discuss this is a member of the People's Democratic Party in Cross River State, Mr. Basi Okon. Thank you very much, Dickin, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Great. Yeah. It's interesting that this is making a headline. It's, um, these are 7,000 appointees by the governor. If I remember clearly, Governor Ben Ayade had... Um, in several fora discussed the reason why he has so many appointees and said that he was using it as a form of empowerment uh, for the young people in Cross River State, also boasting that he has the most young people in his government. But then all of a sudden, it seems like he's strong arming them to join the APC. Um, what are your thoughts as a member, of course, of the opposition? Well, the idea of um, having a, an overbloated government in the last six years was, um, wasn't one I welcomed in any way. Um, having a government that large without people actually contributing anything, you know, in terms of having jobs cut out for them, responsibilities, duties, functions, for me, that has been a, a complete aberration. I have been against it from the world go, that's from 2015 when this whole uh, Makaba dance started. I've spoken against it, and I, I will never support such a system of um, government. Government isn't supposed to provide employment at that level. Governments are supposed to provide a enabling environment for businesses, private businesses to thrive, put infrastructures in place, put um, uh, policies, you know, to drive the private sector so that people can get jobs. Not but the governor, yeah, they boast of doing all of these things. Every time, then, I'm sorry, Mr. Okon, for, for butting in. This is what your governor boasts of every single time. We have a very beautiful billboard of Cross River State here in Lagos painting a beautiful picture of how well the state is doing, how empowered the young people are, how much policies and programs that he's put in place to move the state forward. If you're sitting there and telling me that this is not the case, what's then to believe? You know, he goes of everything and anything. That's how my governor is. That's how he's wired. And we have come to accept him in that way. And the whole thing starts and ends where you see it. On billboards, on internet, here and there. That's where it starts. And if you do, if you ask for the real, you know, the real uh, contribution by this over 7,000 or so employees he brought into his uh, political level, uh, by way of political appointments into the system. You'll be amazed. These guys have not contributed anything. They don't have offices. They don't have um, responsibilities. Most of them have no, have no, don't even know what, why they are there. You know, it's just a, an, um, something for people to just feel okay with. Okay, you want an appointment? Okay, take. You, get, you hear your name announced on uh, on, um, uh, on radio or on the internet. 
on WhatsApp or Facebook. That isn't how to run a government. That's not how to run a system that, that, that is supposed to deliver dividends to the people. Most of these guys and most of these people, you know they were actually doing real things where they came from. Some of them were farmers in the rural communities producing food stuff. Doing things that were able to things that were able to put you know, put food on their tables and feed their families. But I'm curious, Only why, to be why would any, out to why would to state capital and then look around why how many years running? Why would anybody on that list, these seven thousand appointees, leave whatever source of livelihood they had, if they had any, or like leave the wherever they were living and come to the state capital to take an appointment that you say does not have a portfolio per se, it does not have a job, job description, yes. and does not have an office. Why would well-thinking Kosovarians take these appointments if you say that they're just appointments in name? You know, we have um, in a society where there's so much importance attached to being or um, being seen to be a government appointee, bad weight, you know, there's a weight that comes up automatically, automatically upon an appointee, you know, that is what people think it's an edge over them doing whatever they were doing in their rural communities. The urge to be seen as, okay, I'm now a system man, I'm now a stakeholder, as most of them call themselves, they say they are now stakeholders. Uh, yeah, there has done what movements are stakeholders. Stakeholders contributing what that's the first thing. So now that the governor is, is now that the governor is insisting how that many of them are really contributing and impacting on governance? Well, I guess that's yes. a I, I go that that's a question that the governor and his people need to answer. But now that the governor is insisting that these seven thousand, or rather the APC. Um, which is the governor's new party, is insisting that these 7,000 men and women become members of the APC. Um, and this seems like a, you know, an ultimatum of sorts. And if they do not join, they will be sacked. Uh, is there any law that backs this? Of course, he's saying that, you know, according to the party laws, outsiders are not supposed to be holding these political appointments because the APC is the government in power. And so by, by, the, by the laws or whatever in the regulations of the APC, these people have to be members of political parties because they need structures in the local government areas that these men and women come from. Uh, if the governor does indeed decide that he's going to sack some men and women who decide that they do not want to necessarily join the APC, do they have a case? anywhere against the governor if they be sacked okay uh, number one i'm i'm a bit confused about the the ultimatum who who it came from is a, is a bit of an issue to me that instruction came from the state chairman elect of the ruling party yeah the state chairman elect alfonso Eba. In what capacity is he speaking to? Is he issuing such an order to his fellow appointees? Once we say that it's also an appointee, like the people who issuing these instructions. So, in what capacity is he doing this? He's not, a, he's not in government, he's not the governor, he's not the deputy, he's not the SSG. He's the state chairman elect, yet to be inaugurated. He had to take over. He is even an appointee in the GGB process uh, office. So I'm, I'm equally at a loss. This kind of instruction on what basis, how an appointee issuing an instruction to other appointees numbering about 7,000. How? What? He didn't say he was speaking on, on, on behalf of the government. There's nothing to show. 
or to prove that we had the mandate of the governor to so, to so direct. Well, I'd like to quote. Let's even leave that aside. Quote, I'd like to quote from the. I'd like to cite the article where he was quoted, um, uh, quoting from. He he was citing Article Nine, Subsection Five of the APC's Constitution, which he said bars members taking appointments with the government of other political parties. He said it was compulsory for civil servants to register and identify with the party in power. So he's not just talking about these appointees. He's also looking at, he's eyeing civil servants to also be part of this registration process. But I'm trying to understand which civil service law allows for this pron pronouncement that he has made um, to accommodate this ultimatum. I do not know if you're a civil servant. Is there any law uh, under the Civil Service Act that allows for this to hold sway? Civil servants are not supposed to be members of the political parties. Civil servants are meant to drive the process of, of, the, of, the, of an administration towards delivering the goals and objectives. They are not supposed to be members of the political parties. If what you are reading is actually what uh, actually what Eba uh, meant, then it's uh, it's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. We can't even the government cannot threaten civil servants to join this party. It's not. It's not possible. It's not acceptable in any client. Civil servants. It's not. It can't work. Okay. Let's. Okay. Let me ask. Those civil servants working in um, let's say the states. Uh, independent electoral commission. You have civil servants working there. They now join APC. What becomes of elections that will be uh, conducted by such a body? Interesting. What becomes of, uh, of elections that will be conducted by such a body? I'd like to quote another thing. I'd, I'd like to quote another, another thing that he said. He said, here as a party, I'm quoting Eba. We want to make it known today that all heads of government at local government level and at the state must follow the provisions of our constitution with effects from January 1 of 2022, those appointees of the government that are yet to, re to be registered and fully participate in activities of the party shall cease to hold respective offices. He goes ahead to say, we therefore call a local government chairman who today had over 20,000 appointees uh, of five persons per rolling unit uh, to the 3,281 polling units and on the state government payroll, we call on the Auditor General to take note that our 7,000 and 8,000 appointees of government who are yet to be registered with the APC must be relieved of the appointments henceforth. Make it make sense, please. It makes sense to me. It's very clear to me, but it is an aberration. If he's addressing political appointees, fine, I can understand. Most of those people, they don't even, they've not been paying their salary. So maybe it's a strategy to send them back by uh, January 1. The government has not been paying salaries of uh, so many of these appointees. Not so, so many of them are grumbling. They've not, they've not receive salaries, the local government system, the local government system, that's the political appointees in the LG, three months running, they've not been paid. Three months now. So if you want to find a way to do away with that burden, then approach these people and ask them to resign. Don't intimidate them about uh, uh, them uh, registering and uh, defecting to APC or not defecting. There is no money to pay people. That's maybe that's why this is coming up now. Like I've told you, local government appointees, uh, the chairman, council chairman, vice chairman, and the rest of the political structures in the LGs, three months running, no salaries. What so add to the other appointees in the system, in the uh, executive, so many of them are doing without salary. So many of them, they not, they don't even know what salary drops per time. They, mm. can, ask, they can see an alert now, they don't know whether it's for October, whether it is that of May that they didn't pay. 
the, the, the July. So what about the seeds? What they take is that the seed? Is that a government? Is that how things are done? But then, but when then, but then, but then the PDP is also there in the state. What is the PDP doing to put the government on its feet? Because I was having a conversation with a person some some days ago, and the person complained about the state of things in Cross River State. But then there is an opposition that once used to be the government or the party that was leading the state that seems to be half past dead. Why is the, a uh, the PDP not doing its job as a credible opposition to the APC if you're complaining this bitterly about how the governor is governing the state? Well, definitely the PDP has been saying all they need to say. We've said everything that needs to be said about uh, what's going on in Cross River. Is it the, is it the uh, decay in infrastructure? Is it the tourism industry, the tourism sector that has uh, uh, that has kneeled out? Uh, is it water supply? Is it education? We've talked about all these things. PDP is doing its utmost as an opposition party in this state to ensure that this this government sits sits up. But you know, we can only do our best as opposition. It lies with the governor to. Now decide, okay, the things that have been my attention is being done to. I'm going to look at them one by one, or I'm going to you know, show some traction in certain areas and show that, okay, yes, I'm a listening governor. I've heard what the, the, the people are saying, and these are the things that I'm, I'm, putting, uh, I'm putting in place. You know, is, the governor, is the uh, governor a listening governor? We are not seeing any of these things. Is the governor the right a listening governor? Him. Does he listen? Does it, is there any chance he doesn't, that no, the governor I will hear have... and do what the people are asking him for, including the opposition? Or, I mean, this is almost the last bit of his tenure. Uh, and so it's easy for you to, as someone who's in the state, to tell us from his body language if there will ever be a change of heart whatsoever. I don't see any change of heart. He doesn't listen. He's the only one. He's the one that knows it all. He doesn't listen. Complain from now, from morning to your life. He doesn't listen. Six years plus. He doesn't listen. There's nothing that needs to be said that has not been said. Okay. Well, Even I'll... when... Go ahead. So he, he, he's not uh, disposed to taking, uh, taking advice, taking... Um, uh, looking for um, um, extra knowledge from anywhere, you know, state executive council meeting is not uh, what we used to know state uh, expo meeting uh, meetings of those days to be. You know, he himself has said that he can run the government without commissioners, without council members. He has said it, you know, that he's doing them a favor. So he's, you know, he has always had this. Body language. I'm all knowing like that. I'm the one that yeah, that is running this this uh, this system. Okay. I know what to do. I know what not to do. So uh, I don't see any change in um, in his uh, demeanor going into 2022. He has about six, eight, uh, 17 months uh, months uh, to run. I don't see any change from based on even the budget that he presented uh, a few weeks ago. There's. Um, um, I don't really have any hope in that budget, like the past uh, five budgets that uh, he has presented. So we, we, are, we are not seeing a man who is ready to, you know, initiate processes to correct the errors of the past. I want, who is the I want, to, quickly, I want to quickly move away from my idea and talk about the PDP quickly before I let you go. Now okay. we've, we've seen that the governor has obviously moved from the PDP to the APC and took a massive chunk of members of your party to the APC, including taking your former uh, party secretariat and turned it into an APC um, national, um, state secretariat. Yeah. Like I asked earlier on, it looks like the PDP is half past dead. What is the PDP doing to rejuvenate itself, to rebrand itself? Is the PDP at this moment, or will it be capable to take back power, or do we see the APC producing another governor um, that would, one way or the other, be at the behest of Governor Ben Ayade? APC can produce the next governor. 
Why not? So, um, the, the PDP had, uh, did a rebound immediately after he, he sought our, our former state office. He immediately got another place while uh, looking into the issue of um, our office that he has, uh, uh, he has wrongly taken, take, taken away. We, we have, a, we have a, a temporary place up and running. You know, then the other structures uh, at the local governments are also up and running. Are they? Because I also hear that most of those structures that the PDP had in local governments have been taken over by the APC and most of them have moved again with the people that made up that party structure. So I'm, I'm trying to sincerely see how the PDP is up and running. Yes, we've seen the two former governors, um, Lea Limoke and Donald Duke, trying to run around and rally around the party. But it, sincerely, how long will it take? Can, is 2023 really... Um, something that the PDP can hang on to? Or should we just um, jettison that hope and um, look to the APC, uh, knowing that um, the PDP has taken some blows? Because this is the first time such a thing is happening in the state. Yes, the party has rebounded. The structures at the local government and the world levels are all in place. Our... Um, the, um, we have good hands consulting for the governorship position. At the last check, I can readily count about six or seven governorship aspirants, credible men and women who want to take over from him in the 2023. So the party is intact. The party is intact. What about the, the, what about the argument about zoning? We see a Sandy Ono saying mm. that you know zoning has mm. has is has to be jettisoned. It's a it's an age old archaic thing. So really, the PDP still has to deal with the issue of zoning. And some people saying you need to toss out zoning, toss it yes, out the window. Yes, the, the PDP has. Yes, we have that issue of zoning to deal with. They in APC also have the issue of zoning to also deal. With. In APC, there are also people in the centre who are interested in the government. So. It's not what you are seeing, what you are hearing some of them trying to make it look like uh, for the APC the governorship to the South in 2023 is a accomplished mode. So it's not. They have people in the center who are also interested, like the uh, PDP has just one in the person of Sandy on. So our, our structures are up and running. The office, the state office is there with uh, a legitimate expo in place. Very legitimate expo. APC can't, can't boast of that. Uh, Alphonse will say uh, Eba and his present team uh, pending uh, innovation. There are people contending, uh, contesting the, uh, the, the process that brought them, uh, brought them up. A serious contention. In fact, this announcement, let me even say, let me put it uh, very clear. This announcement to 7,000 appointees is because they have pillars that in January, they begin to see people in government declare for the PDP. That's one of that's a, that's a very major critical reason why you had that threat. Okay. Okay. We are seeing that threat from Mr. Alphonse to say that. Okay. There are other people, there are people know that the party of hope at the state and at the national level is the PDP. Well, what, what, so how is the party that is challenged both at the national and uh, at the state level going to take over the government house of Calabar? I don't see it happening. Well, let's see. Whatever yeah. happens uh, in Cross River State uh, is something that remains to be seen. But I want to say thank you. Basio Cohn is a member of the People's Democratic Party in Cross River State. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. We are very much on ground here. Yeah. Thank All you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll look into the federal government's plan to increase taxes and levies and what repercussions it will have on businesses, especially in the private sector. Stay with us.